Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to learn integration by completing the square. When the integrand is a rational function with quadratic expression in the denominator, we can use those for table integrals, ending up with arctangent, arcsine, and ln functions. Certain other types of integrals involving quadratic functions can be evaluated using trigonometric and hyperbolic substitutions. The prerequisite knowledge for integration by completing the square is completing the square technique, which will be our main tool, factoring perfect square trinomials, and for certain type of problems, we'll use partial fraction decomposition. We'll solve those 12 problems, and the problems develop sequentially. Let's begin. Problem number 1. 1 over x squared minus x plus 1. As we can see, the denominator is a quadratic function. So we can apply completing the square technique here. We are going to use these four table integrals, which is derived for us already. So we don't have to re-derive or use the long method because we know that derivative of arctangent of x is 1 over x squared plus 1. Similarly, the derivative of arcsine of x is this integrand and those ln integrals. So if we can make the denominator look like one of those integrands, we can directly use the table integrals we have. So our start point is completing the square. We have x squared minus x plus 1 equals to 0. We have to make sure that the coefficient in front of x squared term has to be 1, or else we can't start completing the square. In that case, we have to divide all the terms by the coefficient. In the completing the square technique, we need to clear the constant, so we subtract 1 on both sides, and we keep the x terms on the left hand side. Now we need a space holder on both sides because we're going to add the half of the coefficient of the b term squared. The coefficient in front of x term is 1. Half of 1 is 1 half. We square it and add on both sides. So we automatically obtain perfect square trinomial on the left and some constant on the right. Now we know how to factor out perfect square trinomial. So we take the square root of the a term, we take the square root of c term, and we use the sign between the x terms, and then square the quantity. And we can bring the constant to the left-hand side by adding on both sides. Now our denominator x squared minus x plus 1 is equal to x minus 1 half the quantity squared plus 3 over 4 after completing the square. So this function is equal to that function. Now we can bring this into denominator. As we can see here, variable squared plus some constant. We can make it look like the derivative of arctangent, which is 1 over variable squared plus constant squared. So we have to express 3 over 4 in the squared form. So we take both numerator and denominator's square root, and then square the quantity. But to be more precise for the beginners, I would like to apply some u substitution here. So now let u become x minus 1 half. Then the u will be derivative of this. Derivative of x is 1, 1 dx, and derivative of constant is 0. Now let's rewrite everything in terms of u. So we have 1 over u squared plus, and we said that we can express 3 over 4 as square root of 3 over 2 the quantity squared. Because if you square this fraction, you obtain 3 over 4. Our purpose is to make it look like x squared plus some quantity squared. Now, as we can see that this is the integrand of 1 over x squared plus a squared, which is the derivative of arctangent of x. 
So we can directly apply 1 over a arctangent x over a plus c. In our case, u is our x and radical 3 over 2 is our a term. Now we have 1 over u squared plus radical 3 over 2 to quantity squared. And when we apply the arctangent using the table integral, we get 1 over a, which is 1 over radical 3 over 2, tangent inverse, x over a, which is our u over a. And if you bring u back, which is x minus 1 half, this is what we obtain. And if you simplify, 1 over some fraction is the flip of the fraction. And if you simplify the argument of arctangent, what you get is 2 over radical 3, tangent inverse, 2 over radical 3 times x minus 1 half. And if you further refine it, we get 2 times x minus 1 half, which is 2x minus 1, over radical 3 plus c. So this is our final answer. Problem number 2. 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 7. Again, we see a quadratic denominator. This type of integrants can be handled either using partial fraction decomposition or completing the square technique, if not trigonometric substitution or hyperbolic substitution. Here our main path is completing the square. So let's bring our table integrals. Now our purpose is to make the integrant look like one of those integrants in the table by just completing this. We have x squared minus 5x plus 7. Our first step is to make sure that the coefficient of x squared term is 1. It is in our term, so we go to second step. Second step is to clear the constant. So we subtract 7 on both sides to obtain x squared minus 5x equals to negative 7. Now we take the half of the b term, which is negative 5. Half of negative 5 is 5 over 2. We square it and add on both sides. So we automatically obtain perfect square trinomial on the left hand side and some constant on the right that we will merge. We know how to factor out perfect square trinomials. We take the square root of the a term, square root of x squared is x, and we take the square root of 5 over 2 squared, which is just 5 over 2, and we use the sign in between those x terms, and then square the quantity. So x minus 5 over 2, the quantity squared, is equal to this perfect square trinomial. And now we merge the numbers on the right. And if we merge the numbers on the right, we get negative 3 over 4. And if we add 3 over 4 on both sides, we obtain x minus 5, the quantity squared, plus 3 over 4 equals to 0. Now, this function is equal to our denominator, so we can replace it. When we replace it, we get 1 over x minus 5 over 2 the quantity squared plus 3 over 4. This again looks like the derivative of arctangent of x, which is 1 over some variable squared plus some constant squared. So we can express this constant in the squared form. So now what we have is 1 over x minus 5 over 2 the quantity squared plus radical 3 over 2 to quantity squared. If you square radical 3 over 2, you obtain 3 over 4. So we get the square root of this fraction, the quantity squared. Now we can apply u substitution. As you get more fluent, you can skip u substitution phase. But for now, for the purpose of practice, I'll do some u substitutions here. So let u become x minus 5 over 2. So du will be derivative of this, which is dx. Now let's rewrite everything in terms of u. So we have 1 over u squared plus radical 3 over 2 to quantity squared. 
and this is exactly looking like 1 over x squared plus some constant squared. In our case, u is x and a is radical 3 over 2. So we can rewrite this as 1 over u squared plus a squared du, which we can take the integral directly as 1 over a arctangent of x over a plus c. We said that our x term here is u here. If we bring a term as radical 3 over 2, which will be 1 over radical 3 over 2, which will be 2 over radical 3, and tangent inverse of x minus 5 over 2 over radical 3 over 2. Here we can do keep change flip, keep the first fraction, multiply by the inverse of the second fraction. So we obtain 2 over radical 3, tangent inverse of 2x minus 5 over radical 3 plus c. Problem number 3. 1 over x squared minus x plus 2. We have quadratic denominator and our start point is completing the square. Our reference table is here, ready for us. We have x squared minus x plus 2 equals to 0. Now we have to make sure that coefficient of x squared term is 1, so we have no problem here. Now second step is to get rid of the constant. We subtract 2 on both sides. We take the half of b term, which is 1, and square it, add it on both sides. So half of 1 is 1 half, and squared is 1 half squared. Now we automatically obtain perfect square trinomial on the left hand side, which we can easily factor out as x minus 1 half the quantity squared. Take the square root of x squared and take the square root of 1 half squared and use the sign in between the x terms. And we can merge the constants on the right hand side, which is negative 7 over 4. Now we're going to add 7 over 4 on both sides. So at the end of completing the square, we obtain x minus 1 half the quantity squared plus 7 over 4 equals to 0. So we know that this is equal to x squared minus x plus 2, so we can replace it. When we replace it, we obtain 1 over x minus 1 half the quantity squared, and we can express 7 over 4 as radical 7 over 2 the quantity squared. Now we can apply u substitution. Our x minus 1 half is our u term, and radical 7 over 2 is our a term, so it looks like our 1 over u squared plus a squared, which is like the derivative of arctangent of x. So we can use this table integral. In our case, our a term is radical 7 over 2, so 1 over a, 1 over radical 7 over 2, and u over a, which is x minus 1 half over radical 7 over 2. Here we can simplify. 1 over fraction will be flipping 2 over radical 7, arctangent of, and here we have keep change flip. So x minus 1 half times 2 over radical 7. It makes 2x minus 1 over radical 7 plus c. So after simplification, this is our final answer. Problem number 4. We have 1 over 5 minus 4x minus x squared. Our denominator in the integrand is a quadratic function, and whenever we have quadratic denominator, our start point is always completing the square. So we have 5 minus 4x minus x squared. Now we need to rearrange this because we need positive x squared term and we group x terms and factor out negative sign. So 5 minus parentheses x squared plus 4x. 
Now we apply completing the square procedures. So our B term is 4. And we take the half of the B term. Half of 4 is 2. And we square it and add on both sides. Because our constant is on the same hand side, so we add it on the constant. So 2 squared is 4. We add it to the constant here. And we add on the x term here. Now, for added to x terms, here create perfect square trinomial. This is our perfect square trinomial. And we add 4 on the constant here, so we obtain 9. 5 plus 4 is 9. Now we can express 9 as 3 squared, and we can factor out perfect square trinomial as x plus 2, the quantity squared. Square root of x squared is x square root of 4 is 2 and the sign we need to use is plus now our denominator 5 minus 4x minus x squared is equal to 3 squared minus the quantity of x plus 2 squared now we can replace this with our completed the square form now what we obtained is 1 over 3 squared minus x plus 2 the quantity squared. This is like our number 4 in our reference table because we have some constant squared minus x squared. So we can directly apply this table. In this case our a term is 3 and our x term is x plus 2. So we can replace a as 3 and x as x plus 2. So our integral will be 1 over 2 times a term ln of a term which is 3 plus x term which we said x plus 2 over a term 3 minus x term which is x plus 2 plus c. And if you rearrange this 3 plus 2 is 5 and distribute negative sign and simplify you obtain 1 over 6 ln of x plus 5 on top and x minus 1 on the bottom plus c so this is by using the table if you didn't know this table then we could go to long path another pathway is completing the square plus partial fraction decomposition. So whenever you have quadratic denominator, another path would be completing the square plus partial fraction decomposition. Let me go ahead and show you the other path, which is completing the square plus partial fraction. So if we take the problem from here, when we replaced the denominator after completing the square, now we can apply substitution. Let u be x plus 2. So du will be derivative of this. Derivative of x is dx. Now we can rewrite everything in terms of u. So we have 3 squared and instead of x plus 2 we have u. So u squared. Now, as we can realize that, 3 squared minus u squared is the difference of two squares, or difference of perfect squares. We know that if we have difference of two squares, which is, let's say, a squared minus b squared, then we can rewrite it as a minus b times a plus b. So, we will we can expand this using the difference of two squares. In our case, we have 3 minus u times 3 plus u will be giving us 3 squared minus u squared. Now our new integrand is 1 over 3 minus u times 3 plus u. Now here we will apply partial fraction decomposition. As we said that, another pathway is completing the square plus partial fraction decomposition. We have two factors. One factor is 3 minus u, 
and another factor is 3 plus u. Our factors are linear, so our numerators will be constant. So we can use constant a and constant b. That is equal to our original integrand. So a over 3 minus u plus b over 3 plus u is equal to our original integrand. Now, by applying the partial fraction decomposition, we will try to figure out what a and b might be. We multiply the whole equation by the GCF common denominator, which is 3 minus u times 3 plus u. Now we will distribute this GCF into all terms in the equation. Our GCF multiplied by the first term, we obtain a times 3 plus u, because 3 minus u cancels out 3 minus u, and a times 3 plus u is left over. Now our GCF multiplied by the second term, we obtain b times 3 minus u, because 3 plus u cancels out 3 plus u, and b times 3 minus u is left. Now our GCF multiplied by the last term, we obtain 1, because 3 minus u cancels 3 minus u, and 3 plus u cancels 3 plus u, so 1 is left. Now we will give some values for u. Let u be equal to 3. Then we have a times 3 plus instead of u, 3 plus b times 3 minus u. Here 3 minus 3 cancels, it is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So we have 3 plus 3 is 6. So 6a plus 0 equals to 1. And if we solve for a here, a is equal to 1 sixth. Now let's give value for u, negative 3. If u is negative 3, then we place u as negative 3, and here 3 minus 3 is 0. So this time a term is 0, and we have 3 minus minus 3 is 6, which is 3 plus 3, so 6b equals to 1. And if we solve for b here, we obtain b equals to 1 sixth. Now we figured out what a and b is. a is 1 over 6, and b is also 1 over 6. So we know that this fraction plus second fraction is equal to our original integrand. So we can replace that with our original integrand. Let's bring a over 3 minus u and b over 3 plus u. So we have 1 over 6 over 3 minus u plus 1 over 6 over 3 plus u. Here we can separate the integrals using the linearity and we can also pull out 1 over 6 in front of the integral sign. Here we know that 1 over 3 minus u is ln integral. Similarly, 1 over 3 plus u is the ln integral. You can practically directly take the antiderivative, or you can apply another substitution. For the first integral, let v equals to 3 minus u, then dv will be derivative of this. Derivative of negative u is negative du. Similarly, let w be equal to 3 plus u, so dw will be derivative of this, derivative of positive u is du. Now let's rewrite everything in terms of v and w. So we have negative 1 sixth integral of 1 over v plus 1 sixth integral of 1 over w. We know that antiderivative of 1 over variable is ln of that variable. So here we have negative 1 sixth ln of absolute value of v, don't forget the absolute value sign, plus 1 sixth ln of absolute value of w plus c. Here we can switch the order because this is negative, this is positive. 
because addition is commutative. So 1 sixth ln of w minus 1 sixth ln of v plus c. Here we can factor out 1 sixth, which is the common number. So 1 sixth ln of w minus ln of v. Now we can use logarithmic rules, law of logarithm. If you have ln of a minus ln of b, you can rewrite it as ln of first over second a over b. So we can convert ln of w minus ln of v as ln of w over v. Now we can bring w and v. We said that w is 3 plus u, so we can bring on the numerator. And we said that let v be equal to 3 minus u, so we can bring it onto denominator. Now we can also bring u back. We said that originally let u be equal to x plus 2. So let's bring that as well. Now we have 3 plus x plus 2, 3 minus x plus 2. Don't forget to use in parentheses because we're going to distribute negative sign here. We can simplify. We can merge the numbers. 3 plus 2 is 5. So we have x plus 5 on the numerator. And after distributing negative sign and simplifying, 3 minus 2 is 1. So we have negative x plus 1. Negative x plus 1 is equal to x minus 1 if you multiply it by negative. Now we obtain the simplest form. 1 sixth ln of x plus 5 over x minus 1 plus c. We originally said that using our table integral, we said that our a term is 3 and our x term is x plus 2. So if we replace 1 over 2 times a term, ln of a term plus x term over a term minus x term plus c is giving us exactly the same integral. So you can either use the table integral once you make the integrand look like constant squared minus variable squared or you can apply completing the square plus partial fraction decomposition. Problem number five. Our integral is dx over square root of x squared plus x minus two. Regardless of radical sign, we have quadratic denominator. So our start point is completing the square. So let's complete the square. We have x squared plus x minus two equals to zero. Our x squared term is positive and coefficient is one. So we have no issue here. Our b term is 1, 1x. One so we take half of the b term and square it at on both sides. So here we obtain perfect square trinomial. And on the right hand side, we obtain some constant. We can factor out perfect square trinomial easily. Square root of x squared is x square root of one half squared is just one half and the sign in between will be plus so x plus one half the quantity squared is equal to our this perfect square trinomial and if we merge the constant on the right hand side we obtain 9 over 4 now let's subtract 9 over 4 on both sides so x plus one half the quantity squared minus 9 over 4 equals to 0. So this is equal to our x squared plus x minus 2 after completing the square. We can also express 9 over 4 as 3 over 2 the quantity squared because we will be needing this. Now let's carry this into our denominator. So we have x plus 1 half the quantity squared minus 3 over 2 squared. As you realize that this is like our 
reference table number three because we have variable squared we have some variable squared and some constant squared and the sign in between can be plus or minus and it is under the radical sign so we will apply this table so in our case our constant term a is 3 over 2 and our variable x is here x plus 1 half so we can rewrite a ln of absolute value of x plus square root of x squared plus or minus a squared plus c replaced with our new x and new a after replacing x term and a term this is what we have and we can simplify x plus one half squared we can expand it obtain x squared plus x minus two and we can take the square of three over two squared which is nine over four and we can merge these two constants finally after simplification our integral turns into ln of x plus one half plus square root of x squared plus x minus 17 over 4 in absolute value plus c problem number six we have integral of dx over 8 minus 2x minus x squared let's start by completing the square because we have quadratic denominator our x squared term is negative so we keep the x terms in parentheses and factor out negative sign so we obtain positive x squared term so we can start completing the square now what we do is take the half of b term our b term is 2 b term is the coefficient in front of the x half of b term is 1 half of 2 is 1 we square it and add it to the x terms and to the constant here we obtain perfect square trinomial automatically after completing the square and here we can merge 8 and 1 now what we have is 9 minus this perfect square trinomial that we can factor out as x plus 1 the quantity squared square root of x squared is x square root of 1 is 1 and the sign in between is plus so x plus 1 squared is equal to our perfect square trinomial now we can express 9 as 3 squared so our new denominator is equal to 3 squared minus x plus 1 quantity squared after completing the square so we can bring it as our new denominator as you can realize that this is like our constant squared minus variable squared which is like our number four table integral so you can do either substitution instead of x plus one and then go to partial fraction decomposition as we did in problem number five so completing the square plus partial fraction decomposition as long path or you can directly use number four table integral in our case our a term is three and our x term is x plus one so we can bring a here and x here and here so we have 1 over 2 times 3 ln of 3 plus x plus 1 over 3 minus don't forget the parentheses x plus 1 and if we simplify 1 over 6 2 times 3 is 6 3 plus x plus 1 3 plus 1 is 4 so x plus 4 on the numerator 
3 minus x plus 1 will be x minus 2. This is going to be negative x plus 2, which is x minus 2, if you multiply by negative. So this is our final answer. Problem number 7. We have integral of dx over square root of 1 minus 2x minus x squared. Again, we have quadratic function here, 1 minus 2x minus x squared. We will start by completing the square. So we have 1 minus 2x minus x squared equals to 0. Here our x squared term is negative. We can't start completing the square unless this is positive x squared and coefficient is 1. So we can group the x terms and factor out negative sign. So x squared term will be positive here. Now we're going to take the half of the b term square it and add it to the x terms and the constant. Constant is on the same hand side here, so we can add it here. And if we simplify, this is what we get. 1 plus 1 is 2, and this is perfect square trinomial automatically, so we can factor it out as x plus 1, the quantity squared square root of x squared, square root of 1, and the sign in between. x plus 1 squared is equal to our perfect square trinomial. Now we can express 2 as square root of 2 squared. So this is equal to our new denominator. We can bring it here under the radical sign because we completed this part to the square. Here we can apply u substitution. Let u become x plus 1. So du will be derivative of this, which is the x. And if you rewrite everything in terms of u, what we have is radical 2 squared minus u squared. And this looks like our number 2 table integral because we have radical constant squared minus variable squared. We have constant squared minus variable squared under the radical sign. So this is our arc sign of u over a plus c. And in our case, our a term is radical 2 and our u term is x plus 1. So we can bring it back. And if you bring x and a term, you obtain arc sine of x plus 1 over radical 2 plus c. If you want inverse sine notation instead of arc sine, you can replace arc sine as sine inverse. They are the same things. Problem number 8. In this problem, different from the other problems we did, we have variable in the numerator. In the previous problems, our numerator was just a constant number. Now we have a variable in the numerator. That means, one, this is two pieces of integral. Two, we need to know the derivative of the denominator to utilize one of the integrals here. Let's go ahead and see what I really mean. In either case, we start by completing the square because this is a quadratic function. So x squared plus x plus 1 equals to 0. Here our x squared term is has coefficient 1 and it is positive. So we can continue completing the square. If it was not 1, we had to make it 1 by dividing all terms by that coefficient. As next step, we subtract 1 on both sides. So x squared plus x equals to negative 1. And then, this is our b term. b term is the coefficient in front of x, not x squared. So we take the half of b term, which is 1 half. 
we square it and add on both sides. So we automatically obtain perfect square trinomial here and some constant here. Now we know how to factor out perfect square trinomial. We take the square root of x squared, we take the square root of 1 half squared, and we use the sign in between axes. So x plus 1 half, the quantity squared, is equal to our perfect square trinomial here. And if we merge those numbers, we obtain negative 3 over 4. Now, what we're going to do is adding 3 over 4 on both sides. So we obtain x plus 1 half squared plus 3 over 4 equals to 0. Now we know that this is equal to our denominator after completing this square. So we can replace it. We also need to express 3 over 4 as radical 3 over 2 the quantity squared. We need the constant in the squared form because as you can see in our table integrals all constants are in squared form. So we need to express the constant in the squared form. Now we replace the denominator with x plus 1 half squared plus radical 3 over 2 the quantity squared. Now we are going to do u substitution. Let u become equal to x plus 1 half. Then du will be derivative of this. Derivative of x is dx and derivative of constant is 0. So du equals to dx. Now let's rewrite everything in terms of u. Let's also express the numerator as x plus 1 half plus 1 half. 1 half plus 1 half is 1, so it's going to be equal to x plus 1. I'll explain why we used x plus 1 half plus 1 half. Now we can separate into two integrals. Our first integral will be x plus 1 half as numerator and using the same denominator, which is x squared plus x plus 1 and our second integral will be 1 half over the same common denominator. Now we know that the second integral is constant over some quadratic that we can use one of those table integrals and the first part x plus 1 half over some quadratic here we, we're gonna use the derivative of this and then make the numerator look like derivative of the denominator. That was the reason that we split 1 into x plus 1 half plus 1 half. We said that derivative of x squared plus x plus 1 is 2x plus 1. Derivative of x squared is 2x derivative of x is 1, derivative of 1 is 0. So I need to make x plus 1 half look like 2x plus 1. So that means if I multiply 1 half times 2x plus 1, 1 half times 2x is x, 1 half times 1 is 1 half. So actually x plus 1 half is re-expressed using 1 half times 2x plus 1. So 2x plus 1 will be derivative of the denominator that can cancel out. So instead of x plus 1 half, I write 1 half times 2x plus 1. And I can pull 1 half in front of the integral sign. Now we're going to apply u substitution for the first integral here let u become equal to x squared plus x plus 1, the whole denominator here. Then the u will be derivative of this. Derivative of x squared plus x plus 1 is 2x plus 1, dx. And if you solve for dx here, 
dx will be du over 2x plus 1. Now let's rewrite everything in terms of u. So we have 1 half in front of integral sign and 2x plus 1 on the numerator instead of x squared plus x plus 1 we have u and instead of the x we have du over 2x plus 1 2x plus 1 cancels 2x plus 1 so we have 1 half 1 over u du which will end up ln integral we know that 1 over u is equal to ln of absolute value of u. And we can bring u back. u was x squared plus x plus 1. So our integral ends up in 1 half ln of absolute value of x squared plus x plus 1. Now let's take care of the second integral. In our second integral, we can pull one half in front of the integral sign and we can use the completed the square form of the denominator. So instead of x squared plus x plus 1, we use what we found here at the end of completing the square. And then we can use the u substitution. Let u be equal to x plus 1 half then the u will be derivative of this. Derivative of x is dx. And derivative of 1 half is 0. Let's rewrite everything in terms of u. 1 half integral of 1 over radical 3 over 2 squared plus u squared. As you can see that this looks like, this looks like our arctangent integral. Because derivative of arctangent is 1 over constant squared plus u squared or integral of this is the arctangent it is like number one on our table integrals so let's use the table integral dx over x squared plus a squared is equal to 1 over a arctangent of x over a plus c so in our case, our a term is radical 3 over 2, and our x term variable is x plus 1 half. So when we replace radical 3 over 2 instead of a, and x plus 1 half instead of x, and we had 1 half in front of the integral sign that comes from here, now we can simplify and finalize. 1 over the fraction means flip the fraction. If you have 1 over a over b, that means b over a. So this is going to be 2 over radical 3. 2 cancels 2 here. And if you use keep change flip here, if you have a over b over c over d, it's going to be a over b times d over c. Now after the simplification we have 1 over radical 3 tangent inverse or arctangent same thing of 2x plus 1 over radical 3 plus c. Now this integral plus this integral is our final answer for solution of this integral. So now we can put together so this is our final answer. So if you have some variable on the numerator and quadratic denominator, that means you will end up two integrals. One of them will be our table integrals, regular u substitution or just regular integral techniques. Problem number nine. We start by completing the square because we have quadratic denominator. We have x squared minus 10x equals to negative 26. We subtract 26 on both sides. We take the half of the b term. Half of 10 is 5. And if you square it and add on both sides, 
you automatically obtain a perfect square trinomial on the left hand side and some constant on the right hand side. We can factor out perfect square trinomial easily square root of x squared and square root of 25 and we use the sign in between x terms. So x minus 5 the quantity squared is equal to our perfect square trinomial here and on right we obtain negative 1. Now we can add 1 on both sides. So we get x minus 5 the quantity squared plus 1 equals to 0. We know that this is equal to our denominator here. So we can replace it. Now our new integrand is 1 over x minus 5 the quantity squared plus 1. Here we can apply u substitution. Let u be equal to x minus 5, then the u will be derivative of this. Derivative of x is dx, derivative of constant is 0. Now let's rewrite everything in terms of u. So we have u squared plus 1 squared. Instead of x minus 5, we use u. As you can realize that 1 over variable squared plus constant squared is our arctangent function. We said that this is arctangent. In our case, our constant a is 1 and our variable u is x minus 5. So we can bring x and a. In our case, our a term is 1 our x term is u which is x minus 5 so it's going to be 1 over a tangent inverse u over a let's bring u and a back u is x minus 5 a is 1 x minus 5 divided by 1 is the same thing so our integral ends up tangent inverse of x minus 5 plus c problem number 10 in our integrand, we have a variable on the numerator. So our expectation for this integral is to obtain two integral, that one of them will be our table integrals, and the other one will be regular u substitution, and ending up ln integral with the quadratic here. And in either case, we need to start by completing the square, because we will be using it for our second integral here. So let's begin. Let's start completing this square. We have x squared plus 2x plus 10 equals to 0. Our first step is to clear the constant. We know that our x squared term is positive and coefficient is 1. We subtract 10 on both sides. Our b term is 2. We take half of the b term, half of 2 is 1, we square it and we add on both sides. So we automatically obtain perfect square trinomial on the left hand side and some constant on the right hand side. We can factor out this perfect square trinomial easily. Take the square root of the first term, take the square root of the last term and use the sign in between. So x plus 1, the quantity squared, is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And on the right, we obtain negative 9. Now we can add 9 on both sides. Now, after completing the square, this function is equal to our denominator here that we will be using soon. Now, as we said initially, we have a variable on the numerator, so we need to get rid of this. For this, we will utilize the derivative of the denominator. Derivative of the denominator is 2x plus 2. If we take the derivative of this, derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 2x is 2, and derivative of constant is 0. 
So we need to make x look like 2x plus 2 or some multiples of 2x plus 2. So we can add 1 and subtract 1. So actually we don't change x because adding 1 and subtracting 1 does not change the value. So we will approach from that method. Now we rearrange the integrand. Now we can separate into two integrals, x plus 1 and negative 1. So our new integrals are x plus 1 over the denominator, common denominator, plus negative 1 over the common denominator. We know that this integral plus the other integral is equal to our original integral. Here we have some constant over quadratic. That means it's going to end up one of our table integrals. And here we have x plus 1, which is the multiples of the derivative of the denominator. So we can easily get rid of this using by u substitution and convert this into regular ln integrals. Let's work on the integral on the left first. Let u be equal to our whole denominator, x squared plus 2x plus 10. Then the u will be derivative of this. We said that derivative of this is 2x plus 2 dx. And if you solve for dx, dx will be du over 2x plus 2. Now, let's plug everything in terms of u. But we can do one more arrangement on the numerator. If we double the numerator and divide by 2, we don't change the value actually. If you double anything and divide by 2, you don't change the value. And our numerator now exactly looks like derivative of the denominator. So that cancels out. Now, instead of the numerator, we have 2x plus 2 times 1 half. Instead of the denominator, we have u. And instead of dx, we have du over 2x plus 2. Now they cancel out each other. So we have 1 half, 1 over u du which we can easily integrate. So our integral is 1 half integral of 1 over u. Antiderivative of 1 over u is ln of absolute value of u. Now we're going to bring u back. We said that u is the denominator. We can bring this in the end. Now let's work on the integral on the right. Now we have negative 1 over our common denominator we can pull negative sign in front of the integral and here we can use completing the squared form that we prepared here because we have numerator which is a constant number not a variable so instead of our original denominator we are going to use our completed the squared form our new integrand is negative 1 over x plus 1 the quantity squared and we can express 9 as 3 squared because if we express the constant as squared form that will be one of our like a squared here if you realize that this is our arctangent because derivative of arctangent is 1 over variable squared plus constant squared or 1 over variable squared plus constant squared if you integrate or antiderivative of this gives you the arctangent. So we're going to apply the table integral here. 1 over a arctangent of x over a plus c. In our case our a term is 3 and our x term is everything in the parentheses. Then we can replace. When we plug in x and a terms we obtain one third tangent inverse of x plus 1 over 3 plus c. So our integral on the left ended up one half ln of u plus c that we will bring now, and the integral on the right ended up being arctangent. Now put together. 
and we had the negative sign in front let's not forget it from the negative one so and if we bring u back this was our u so one half ln of x squared plus 2x plus 10 minus one third arctangent of x plus 1 over 3 plus c so this is our final answer problem number 11 like in problem 10 we have a variable on the numerator not just constant number so our expectation for this integral is two integrals and one of them will be our table integral and the other one will be regular u substitution let's start by completing the square because we will be using it for our one of the integrals we have 5 plus x minus x squared to be able to complete the square we need to have positive 1 in front of x squared term so we group x terms and factor out negative sign so now the coefficient of x squared is positive 1 so we can complete this part to square what we are doing is take the half of the b term b term is 1 b term is the coefficient in front of x term we take the half of b term which is 1 half we square it and add on both sides meaning to the x group and constant because they are now on the same hand side we add them and we automatically obtain perfect square trinomial in the parentheses and some constant here now we know how to factor out perfect square trinomial take the square root of the a term take the square root of z term and use the sign between x terms so x minus one half the quantity squared equals to our perfect square trinomial and we can merge those constants on the left here now after rearranging we obtain 21 over 4 minus x minus one half the quantity squared we can also express this fraction in the squared form because we would like it look like like our a squared term so square root of 21 is square root of 21 and square root of 4 is 2 and if we use in parentheses and square it we obtain exactly the same here now we will use this complete the squared form our second hint is using the derivative of the denominator derivative of the denominator is 1 minus 2x derivative of x is 1 and derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x now we will make numerator look like the derivative of the denominator so for this we can double x with negative 2 and immediately divide by 2 so we don't change the value we add 1 and subtract 1 let's go step by step so what we did here is we multiplied x by negative 2 and immediately divided by negative 2 or multiplied by negative 1 half so we didn't change x because negative 1 half times negative 2x is positive x like our numerator and then we added one and subtracted one immediately so we didn't change anything actually this value is equal to x which is our original numerator however we will be using negative 2x plus 1 or 1 minus negative 2x part when we do u substitution that's why we made it look like the derivative now we can separate into two integrals one integral will be negative one half times negative two x plus one over the common denominator and our second integral is negative one half times negative one over the common denominator here negative cancels negative so one half times integral one over the common denominator we know that the second integral here 
will end up one of those table integrals because we have just constant number over the quadratic denominator regardless of the radical sign and the integral one above will be regular u substitution so integral one plus integral two will give us our original integral now let's work separately our first integral is negative one half integral of negative 2x plus 1 over the common denominator. Here we will use u substitution. Let u be equal to whole denominator. Then du will be derivative of this. And if you solve for dx here, dx will be du over 1 minus 2x. Now we can rewrite everything in terms of u. We had negative one half in front of integral sign. Our numerator was negative two x plus one. Instead of five plus x minus x squared, we have u. And instead of the x, we have du over one minus two x. One minus two x cancels negative two x plus one. They are the same value. So we end up negative one half integral of one over radical u du. Now we can integrate this easily. Radical u is u to the one half. And if you carry it to the numerator, it will be u to the negative one half. Now we can apply the power rule. Power rule for integrals. We add one to the power and divide by the total here. Negative one half plus express one as two over two. So it will be one half and divide by one half. And one half cancels one half. It will be negative u to the one half. And if you clean up, we get negative u to the one half, negative u to the one half, and u to the one half is radical u. So negative radical u. And if we bring u back, u was 5 plus x minus x squared. So this is our final answer for integral 1. Let's box it and we will put together in the end. Our second integral was 1 half integral of 1 over radical 5 plus x minus x squared. Now we will use completed the square form for the denominator because we have a constant numerator. When we replace the denominator with our completed the square form, we get radical 21 over 2 the quantity squared minus x minus 1 half the quantity squared. This is a constant squared like a squared and this is like variable squared under the radical. So this is our arc sine function. Constant squared minus variable squared under the radical. So it will be arc sine of x over a plus c. And in our case, our x is everything in the parentheses. And our a term is radical 21 over 2. Now we can replace it. When we replace x as x minus 1 half and a as radical 21 over 2, and we can simplify here, keep change flip, we can merge this first to x minus 1 over 2 and then keep change flip to x minus 1 over 2 over radical 21 over 2 and keep change flip to x minus 1 over 2 times 2 over radical 21. They cancel out. So this is the argument of arc sine. And we had one half in front of the integral sign originally. So that one half comes from there. Now after simplifying arc sine, this is what we obtain for i2. 
I1 plus I2 will be our final answer. Our final answer is put together. So because that was negative, so we can switch the order. So this is our final answer. Problem number 12. Before I start, you can try this problem by yourself and compare with my answer. In this problem, we have a variable in the numerator and a quadratic denominator. So our expectation for this problem is we're going to obtain two integrals. One of them will be our table integrals and the other one will be regular u substitution. And when we're doing u substitution, we will utilize the derivative of the denominator. And we need completing the square to substitute the denominator for the second integral. Let's begin. We start by completing the square. We have x squared plus 4x plus 8. We subtract 8 on both sides. And we take the half of the b term, which is 2, square it and add on both sides. So we automatically obtain perfect square trinomial on the left. Now we know how to factor out the perfect square trinomial. Square root of the first term, square root of the last term, and the sign in between x terms. And the quantity squared. So x plus 2, the quantity squared, is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 4. And on the right, we obtain negative 4. And if we add 4 on both sides, we obtain this expression, which is equal to our denominator after completing the square. We can keep this. We will use this for our one of the integrals. Now we need to know the derivative of the denominator because we will use it for our u substitution. Derivative of x squared is 2x and derivative of 4x is 4. Derivative of the constant is 0. Now we have 2x plus 4 as the derivative of the denominator. So we will make the numerator look like this. We said that we need to make the numerator look like 2x plus 4. So if we multiply it by 2, we obtain 2x plus 2. And we can express this 2 as 4 minus 2. So we have 2x plus 4 minus 2. So this part of the numerator is exactly like our derivative. So we can use it for u substitution and we can split the integral into two pieces. And we also need to divide this by 2 because multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 will not change the original value which is x plus 1. So 1 half times 2x plus 4 minus 2 is equal to our original x plus 1. We just rearrange the numbers. So our integrand turns into 1 half times integral of 2x plus 4 minus 2 over square root of x squared plus 4x plus 8. Now we can split it into two integrals. The first integral will be 2x plus 4 part as the numerator and we have 1 half in front of the integral sign. And our second integral is negative 2 over the common denominator. And we have 1 half in front of both integrals. If you want, you can pull this negative sign in front of 1 half here. And keep this positive. Now our first integral, we'll going to apply a substitution method. And the second integral, we will use the completing the square technique. And we will replace this with our denominator. Let's start by solving the first integral first. 
let u be equal to your whole denominator here, then du will be derivative of this. And if you solve for dx here, dx will be du over 2x plus 4. Now let's rewrite everything in terms of u. We have one half in front of integral sign. Our numerator is 2x plus 4. Instead of our denominator, we have u. And instead of dx, we have du over 2x plus 4. This 2x plus 4 cancels out. So we have one half integral of 1 over square root of u du. Now we know how to take the antiderivative of this type of integrals. We can express radical u as u to the 1 half. And if we take it to the numerator, it will be u to the negative 1 half. When you switch numerator and denominator, the power will change the sign. Now we're going to add 1 to the power. You can express 1 as 2 over 2. So this total power will be 1 half and divided by 1 half. And this 1 half cancels this 1 half. So u to the 1 half plus c is the answer. And you can convert u to the 1 half as square root of u plus c. Now we need to bring u back. u was x squared plus 4x plus 8. So x squared plus 4x plus 8 under the radical sign plus c. So this is our first integral. Now let's go ahead and do the second integral. In the second integral, this 2 cancels this 2 so we have negative integral of 1 over and instead of our original denominator we will use the completed the squared form because we have no variable on the numerator so we have no restriction to use our table integrals now we have some variable squared let's call it u and some constant squared and plus in between and we have a radical sign. So this is like our ln integrals here. Variable squared, constant squared, and we have plus sign in between. So we can use this table integral here. Now here we need to know what is our x term and what is our a term. Our x term is everything in the parentheses, which is x plus 2. And our a term is 2. So wherever we have x, we will replace with x plus 2 and a with 2. After we replacing x with x plus 2 and a with 2, this is what we obtain. x plus 2 and we have x plus 2 here that we expand and add 4. So this will be our final answer. Now we have our integral 1 and integral 2, so now we need to put together. So when we put together our first integral, this minus sign comes from negative in front of the integral sign here. So it makes this ln minus and finally we need to put negative sign here. So this is our final answer. Thank you for watching this series. I hope you'll be good at integrating by completing the square technique.